Hi Cam, our group is doing our video report on Domino's Pizza Enterprise and I'm going to start us off with question one which relates to the primary activities of the company and the financial and social performance of the analysed annual reports. From the financial report, the principal activities in Domino's during the year were the operation of retail food outlets and the operation of franchise services. During the financial year, there were no significant changes in the nature of these activities. Domino's main focus is to provide high quality pizza at a wide range of price points. The vision of Domino's is to sell more pizza and have more fun. However, there is a risk with operating many thousands of franchises. Domino's right to operate Domino's pizza stores and grant franchises in Australia, New Zealand, Europe and Japan is conferred by a separate master franchise agreement. These agreements may be terminated in certain circumstances, such as a breach by Domino's. If a master franchise agreement is terminated, Domino's will lose the right to operate Domino's pizza stores in that territory and this will fundamentally impact on business. Domino's addresses this risk by maintaining a close working relationship with its master franchisor and by actively monitoring compliance with obligations and operational standards. Now some financial information. Revenue in the financial year ending 2016 was 930218000 This was due to the increase in the participation of the 3 to 10 concept, which is a business initiative to have a pizza made in three minutes and delivered within 10 minutes from the time of order. In financial year ending 2017, revenue was $1,073,000,000. And this was due to an increase in stores worldwide. In Australia and New Zealand alone, there were 66 new stores opened during the financial year. Depreciation and amortisation is a big factor for a company like Domino's. With so many physical stores worldwide, the company must come up with methods to consistently and accurately depreciate and amortise assets. In 2016, depreciation was 38 million and 129,000. In financial year ending 2017, depreciation in spends increased by 9,280,000. This is due to all material assets decreasing their useful life and the implementation of e-bikes, which made some delivery vehicles redundant, as such as company cars and motorbikes. Share capital. In 2016, the total value of all shares was 248,554,000. In 2017, however, the total value of all shares was 340,040,000. This is an increase of 31%. This can be attributed to the share price of Domino's nearly doubling within the financial year. This increase in equity will help fuel Domino's future growth. However, shareholders naturally want a return on their investments and the dividends paid out by Domino's increased by $23 million. Now onto social performance. There were no paragraphs in the annual report of 2016 related to social issues. However, in 2017, Domino's changed their values and provided explanation of the entity's ways to positively impact the environment. One of these ways was the electric e-bikes. During the year, approximately 445,000 deliveries were made on eco-friendly e-bikes. Another initiative is the Give for Good program. Domino's has established Chocolate for Charity, which allows its customers to make charitable donations to a worthy cause, with 10 cents from every signature lava cake sold, donated to the Give for Good program. Domino's also established a Partners Foundation, an internal non-profit organisation created to assist team members in times of special needs or tragedy as a result of natural disasters, unexpected afflictions and other emergencies. I will now hand over to PJ who will talk about the statement of profit and loss. Thank you Sam. Domino's profit in financial year ending 2016 was $86,592,000. The company dedicated this success to their continuing popularity in their products sub-franchising, research and development, and further growth of new stores domestically and internationally. Moving on to year ending 2017, profits had spiked to $105,800,000, that being an increase of 22.2%. This year,
$3.2 million. Therefore, cash provided by operating activities also increased by $51.7 million in 2016. Additionally, in the previous year, there was a negative impact of changes in the operating assets and liabilities of $23.7 million, caused from the timing of payments for accounts payable and accrued liability. Conversely, in 2017, cash administered by operating activities was positively impacted by a spike in non-cash amounts of $18.1 million. These profits noted in the annual report reflect on respective profit and loss for each year, and the success of this year's profit of $105 million is largely attributed to this. Domino's has stated that they are intent on improving their net income and cash flow from operations and aim to continue to generate more positive cash flows for the years to come. In year ending 2016, Domino's general and admin expenses have spiked to $35.9 million. This was due to continued investments in digital innovation, advertising contributions, and higher performance driven expenses. This positive impact was a result of a non-recurrence of approximately 4.7 million of expenses in late 2015. These non-recurring expenses, which are entries unlikely to happen again, can heavily impact a company's profit or loss in a one-time manner. Another factor impacting the profit and loss statement and other comprehensive income within the two years is the case of an extraordinary event, whereby stores are closed down. In 2017, several Domino stores were forced to close because of a foodborne illness, allegedly within the premise. Even with only a few stores closing, this can heavily affect their sales and in turn profit. In 2016, the firm closed a popular company-owned store, causing a reduction of goodwill of up to $0.1 million in general and admin expenses in the consolidated statements of income. Looking at comprehensive income, 2017 end of period was a total of $81,211,000. This is a drop of 49.78% since 2016. Investigating the profit or loss and other comprehensive income statement, there were notably large comparisons between the two years. One of the most prominent was a massive decrease in exchange differences of foreign operations with 2017 recording a loss of $35 million, compared to the approximate $61 million gain in 2016. Noted in the annual report, there was a significant movement in the translation of foreign operations due to the weakening of the Japanese yen, this being a reason for such a downfall. Now Antonio will continue to talk about intangibles and goodwill. Thank you. Thank you PJ and Samuel. Um, intangible assets are defined as assets that are not cash or converted into cash without any physical substance. For example, the brand recognition trademarks would be considered an intangible asset. Goodwill, on the other hand, is an example of an intangible asset where one company acquires another for a price higher than its fair market value of its assets. For example, at Domino's Pizza, it primarily relates to franchise store acquisitions. At Domino's Pizza, goodwill is not amortized but is reviewed for impairment at least annually. For the purpose of impairment testing, goodwill is allocated to each of the consolidated uh, into these cash generating units expected to benefit from the synergies of the combination. Cash generating units to which goodwill has been allocated are tested for impairment annually or more frequently when there is an indication that the unit may be impaired. If the recoverable amount of the cash generating unit is less than the carrying amount, the impairment loss is allocated first to reduce the carrying amount of any goodwill allocated to the unit and then to the other assets of the unit pro rata on the basis of carrying amount to each asset in the unit. An impairment loss recognized for goodwill is not reversed in the subsequent periods. I would like to now talk about the property, plant and equipment. Domino's records property, plant and equipment and other non-current assets at cost. When acquiring assets for franchise operations, the fair values are estimated through inspections and historical experience. Furthermore, assets are depreciated and amortized based on useful lives and other information. Impairment loss of assets is assessed whether the circumstances arise in which changes occur within the firm or at least annually. If the carrying amount of the non-current asset exceeds the expected future undiscounted cash flow of that asset, the, the firm estimates the fair value of the asset. 
If the carrying amount of the asset exceeds the estimated fair value, an impairment loss is recognized and the asset is written down to its estimated fair value. Any additions to property, plant and equipment are recorded at cost and depreciation and amortization expenses are provided using the straight line depreciation method. Property, plant and equipment amounted to 188,050 in 2016 with depreciation and amortization expenses at approximately 27.3 million. Capital lease assets as of 2016 are approximately 5.1 million net of 5.4 million of accumulated amortization from lease of the company owned shared. On to year ending 2017, property, plant and equipment amounted to 198674 with depreciation and amortization expenses at $29.6 million. According to the annual report, capital lease assets were $4.7 million, net of $5.8 million of accumulated amortization. This is a 10624 increase from previous year ending. There are various reasons for this, such as the depreciation of, of more stores. Um, as dominoes expanded, they have more physical assets to depreciate, such as stores, ovens, and restaurant equipment.